Hey there, I'm Zach and I made this thing called Nobbler. Check it out. Nobbler keeps you in the creative moment in your music making. It's an auto labeling, auto coloring, bi-directional control surface that you can customize for each song. Pick back right up where you left off with perfect recall so you can work on several songs at once, each with their own ideal layout saved inside the song file itself. Here we are in Ableton Live and the first thing we need to do is get Nobbler. So I'm gonna to go to the App Store here on my iPad and search for Nobbler. Here it is, and I'm gonna download it. And this is a free download on iOS. There's a 30 day unlimited trial. Use it for a month and then decide if it's worth your money. Okay, so when we launch Nobbler, the first thing it's gonna ask is permission to search the network for other devices. And we want to allow this because we want the Nobbler app to be able to discover the Nobbler Max for live device that we add to our set. And so we're in the app and it says make a connection. Visit the setup tab to get started. Setup tab. And here it scanned the network and it didn't find any Nobbler Max for live devices because we haven't installed it yet in Ableton Live. And so if we tap this button to download and it'll take you here to this web page, which is the Nobbler homepage. And then there's this button, download latest, click that button and then we'll download the Nobbler device. And so we just need to drag this into Ableton Live, and I like to put it in the user library. And now we can Command F and search for Nobbler. Here it is, the one that we just saved. And I like to put it in the main track. So Nobbler scans the network and it found the Nobbler app on the iPad. So we'll select that. And now back on the iPad, if I tap Refresh here, now it found the Nobbler device running on my laptop, I'll select that. It fills in the IP address and the port and tests the connection and everything looks good here. So that's it, that's all it takes to set up Nobbler. And all you need to do is add the Nobbler Max for Live device to your set and then open the app and off you go. Okay, exploring Nobbler. The first thing we'll look at are these two Nobbler pages. And what are these? These are assignable sliders for any parameter in your live set. So we can go into different instruments and select a parameter, let's say the sustain decay, and just tap an unassigned slider. And now that slider always controls that parameter. And we can also choose elements in the mixer, like this track volume, send levels, and let's say this gain control here. And this is all available multi-touch. And Nobbler also follows the colors and names of things. You can see these three parameters from this blue track. If I change that track color to, let's say, this teal, now they all update. And you can also see the track name, which is kick. If I rename that to drums, then it immediately updates in the UI here. Unmapping parameters from Nobbler pages is easy. All you do is tap the unmap button, everything unmappable highlights in red, and then just tap the element that you want to unmap and then exit the unmapping mode with that same button. There are two pages of 16 sliders for those two Nobbler pages. Next to the Nobbler pages, you'll find a tab called Blue Hand. And what this is, is it refers to the blue hand icon on the currently selected device. And the blue hand page gives you access to all of the parameters of the currently selected device. So in this case, we've got the delay device selected. Here are the parameters, the first 16 on the first page. Here's the second page with more parameters. You'll see the toggles are represented as buttons in the UI. Continuous values can be accessed through sliders and multiple choice elements get button treatment. It's easy to map a parameter from a blue hand page to a Nobbler page. Just from the blue hand page, tap the name of the parameter, the parameters outlined in green, then go to a Nobbler page and you can tap any slider that's outlined in green. And now that Nobbler slider is mapped to that parameter. Blue hand works really well with racks. And so here I have an instrument rack selected and you can see there are three variations stored in the rack. And we've got three variations that have shown up here in Nobbler. So here's variation one, two, and three. If I dial in a sound that I like that's different, sure, then I can store that with this snapshot button. 
I can also randomize the macros in the rack with this randomize button. Nobbler works well with your VST instruments too, like this TAL Baseline 101 here. With an instrument open, what you can do is expand the device parameter view here. This lets you configure the parameters that are exposed from your VST plugin to Ableton Live's parameter system. In turn, Nobbler will pick up on those. And so let's, let's see what that means. So I'm just gonna go into configure mode and then I'm gonna delete everything that's configured and you see it disappearing from Nobbler here. And what I can do is just click uh, elements in the VST that I want to be able to control with Nobbler sliders while in that configure mode. And then so one by one, they show up in the UI. Uh, let's just finish clicking through here and fill out our first screen. Okay. And then I'll exit configure mode. And if this is how I always want this instrument to be mapped, I can just right click the title bar and say save as default configuration. And now anytime I load this device, it'll use this parameter configuration. And so I can get to know it as a tactile surface here on Nobbler. And so Nobbler gives me this multi-touch control over my VST instruments as well. This row of buttons up here is, are the device shortcut buttons. And what they give you is a way to access your frequently used devices at the touch of a button. So with the, any device selected, let's say this instrument rack, I just tap one of these unassigned buttons. And now this button will always take us to this device. So if we're somewhere else in the live set, Let's say this utility, maybe we want to save it here. We can go right back to that instrument rack and right back to that utility with a touch of a button. If you don't always want the device shortcut buttons up top here, you can toggle their view with this button here in the toolbar. On the right here, we've got our navigation panel, and this lets us access all of the tracks groups, racks, chains, everything in navigating your Ableton Live set. So we can see here, I'll just create a new track in Live. Here it is immediately in Nobbler. I'll change the color to this blue color. Now it's immediately changed. I'll change the name to like Sexy Sax, uh, and immediately it's updated here in Nobbler. We can navigate to different devices, and like we saw earlier, we can save them as presets up here. You don't always have to have the navigation present here. You can just swipe it away or swipe it back onto the screen here or use this toolbar button up here to toggle the display. On the left here, we've got the channel strip and this is showing us the track volume, the send levels. In this case, I've got two return tracks configured. If I create a new return track and go back to that track, we'll see now I have three. I can control panning left and right, double tap to return to center, control muting, solo, record arm. And if I long press the record button, it toggles to no input. And that's handy if you're overdubbing automation over MIDI data, you can disable input entirely and it won't disturb the MIDI data underneath. And then you also have access to the crossfader assignment. In this case, since we're on a track, it's A and B. But if I navigate to my main track, now I actually have the crossfader control here. Next to that button is this button to show the current param slider. And so what that is, is no matter what you're focused on in Ableton Live, you'll get a slider here that gives you a real high resolution control over that parameter. Nobbler is really designed around automation. I made it because I wanted an easier way to control parameters in my virtual instruments and effects better than the mouse or hardware MIDI controllers. Okay, so let's just play this and we can record some automation without touching the computer. So I'll hit play. This is the session automation record button. There we go. And you can see that Automation's been recorded because the red circle showing up here and I can still override this just like in the UI um, and it turns gray just like in the UI. This button here is the return to recorded automation. Tapping that uh, puts the automation back into play. And of course I can edit the automation here on the computer 
and uh, it'll just follow right along or overdub some more. And so if I want to overdub some automation here in arrangement view, what I should do is long press the record arm button. That sets the input for this track to no input right here. And now I can just hit record and change any parameter. And notice my MIDI data is not being uh, modified underneath. And then I can, you know, copy and paste this automation data. And you can see in the Nobbler display, it's always up to date and overridable. Okay, let's go through the toolbar here. So we've got the first button, which shows and hides the channel strip, which you can show and hide, just like with the navigation with a swipe, a show and hide. There's the show and hide current param slider, show and hide device shortcut buttons. This is the refresh button. This just basically clears the memory of the app and then requests a data refresh from the Max for Live device. This is the unmap button, tap tempo, you can see the tempo changing. Uh, you can type and edit the tempo. This is the metronome button. Transport controls, MIDI overdub, return to recorded automation, capture MIDI, which is really cool. You can just play a pattern. All right, there we go. That's Capture MIDI. We already looked at the session automation record. Then there's loop controls. And next to that is an interesting one. What this does is controls the behavior of racks when you are navigating in and out of them in Nobbler. With this button enabled, if I navigate into a rack, and so in this case, I'm in an instrument rack, it's got two chains. And if I navigate into the chain, if I navigate then out of the chain, and so let's say back to the rack, with this option enabled, uh, that rack is collapsed on the screen. It's not left open. And so I'll go back into it. So now the, the rack is open. If I disable this feature and navigate out of the rack, it's left open in the display here. The next button here is the cue point or locator display. And so you can see I've got two locators set up. And if I move them around, you see the address changing in the Nobbler display here. And if I change their order, uh, they also change immediately in Nobbler here. I can move the cursor from one cue point to another by tapping it. And if the transport was running, it obeys the quantization rules around you know, jumping to time. I can then close the cue point or locator display with this button here, close, or I can just toggle it with this toolbar button. And as we've seen, the last one is this button to show and hide the navigation along the side. Okay, and there's a few features of the Nobbler 4 Max for Live device that I wanted to go over. Let's just start with the top here. The device port lets you set the port that this device is listening on. And so that allows you to have multiple instances of the Nobbler device talking to multiple tablets or phones. Each instance of the Nobbler device needs to have a unique device port. And there's instructions online on how to do that. Below that, we've got the network rescan button. So this will go out and survey the network and look for compatible apps out there. And below that is the drop down to select it. As we all know, in this box, you can type in the host name or IP address of the phone or tablet you're connecting to. The app port for tablets is always 2347. For iPhone, it's 2349. Automate page change lets you automate which Nobbler page is showing up. The debug checkbox, what that does is if you have the uh, open Max window, if we're seeing the Max logs here and I say debug, we're going to be able to observe any communication coming or going from the Nobbler app and the Nobbler Max for Live device. And that may be useful for debugging some stuff, but for the most part, you can leave debug off. The question mark is the help display, gives you a little quick start, links to the homepage troubleshooting guide. 
And down here is the refresh display. And so this just sends a fresh set of data to the app from the Max for Live device. We've got the different Nobbler pages in tabs here, and we can see what parameters are mapped on which page. And so the Nobbler 1 page has all these mapped, Nobbler 2 has nothing mapped. We can unmap from this page by using the X icon here, and that'll get rid of this one. We can also rename the parameter name, so custom name, and then that'll show up here. And you can also control the minimum and maximum amounts of the parameter value that this slider will control. On the blue hand page, we can see the device shortcut assignments here, and that also supports unmapping through this X icon. So I'll unmap true iron here. All right, well, that's it for the feature run through of Nobbler. Thanks for watching. Happy to answer any questions in the comments. Take care now. Happy Noblin. Bye.